But how would you like to make yourself even more visible to a much wider audience? How would you like to start building your credibility with people who don't know you yet? What if you could get in front of 500, 5,000, even 500,000 people who are in your target market? Do you think that might be useful to you? Even better, you can build your credibility with them. When you network offline, you'll go to events where you know your target market's going to show up. You'll go to events where you know there'll be people who might make good referral partners who have the same target market as you. Everybody's come here today because they hope their prospective clients will be here or they may find some good suppliers that will be useful. Here's tip six. LinkedIn has similar meeting places and they're called groups. There's over one million groups on LinkedIn. They're based around profession, location, expertise, hobbies, things like that. Some groups have 50 members in. I think the, the biggest group on LinkedIn has 730,000 members in it. But they all have one thing in common. They all have an option for you to comment on discussions that are going on. They all have discussions going on that are talking about problems that you can solve. And one of the good things about groups is all group members receive a daily email agenda, a daily email digest, or a weekly email digest of all of the discussions that are being started and all of the discussions that are getting comments on them. Now, if you've joined a group that's got 5,000 members in it and you've commented on a discussion, potentially 5,000 members will see that you made a comment and you will be visible to 5,000 people. And don't just join groups where your own industry hangs out, although that is good to you know, network with your, the, the same people who are just like you. Join some groups where you think your target market will be. If you're just looking for people in the northeast area, find groups that are northeast based. Join groups where your target market is. These are two discussions I found over the last few days that are happening in, in LinkedIn. The first one was in an estate agents group. The discussion was, I would really welcome any feedback from my property colleagues on the use of professional photography for selling homes. Is this essential and do you outsource a charge for this service? Now if you're a photographer, that's an ideal place to get in and make a comment. Give them some you know, free advice, a tip. But what about this? You can already see that estate agents are interested in that topic. Why not write yourself a blog post? Five reasons why professional photography is great for selling homes. And do a little bit of a case study of how you've worked with an estate agent and how that's helped them. Another discussion that was started was by a barrister posting in a solicitor's group. I have just joined a top set of chambers and wondering how to quickly improve referrals from solicitor firms. Does anyone have any hot tips? Again, if your area of expertise is how to improve referrals, that's a great place to jump in and give some valuable free advice. It's not the place to jump in with a sales pitch. Again, if you're networking offline, you don't go up to people and say, I'm a photographer, do you want to buy my services? You would start a conversation, you would give tips, you would give advice. You do exactly the same in online networking. Don't just jump in there with a sales pitch. So that's commenting on discussions, but you can also start a discussion. There was someone who recently started a discussion in a, a consultants group. I had to write the question down so I remembered it. He started the discussion, is a period of free consultant an effective way to acquire new business? Now it's a pretty general question, but the chap is a business advisor. That discussion started in December 2009. 
and it's still going on. The last comment on it was three days ago. It's had over 3,000 comments. How visible do you think that person is? But another good thing for him is he can go through all of the people who have commented on that discussion and have a look and see who would make a good client for him, who he wants to build a relationship further and click through to his profile. So groups are a really good place to get involved in. I was speaking to someone recently who had gotten involved in a discussion on a marketing group on LinkedIn. And through that discussion, one of the participants had actually asked them to come and pitch for a project. And it, it ended up in them getting a 12-month contract to produce a marketing strategy for that company. So LinkedIn groups can be a source of really good opportunities. But what if you could use LinkedIn to find people who are asking specific questions around your area of expertise? Would you be interested in that? Here's tip seven. On LinkedIn, people are asking thousands of questions every day in a section called answers. And it appears to be a very little known section. There's not many people who actually use it. There's 22 categories in that section. Everything from administration to finance and accounting to technology. Loads and loads of questions. So what you need to do is, you need to go into the answers section, browse for your area of expertise and get in there and look for some questions to answer. The next slide is an example of a question that was asked recently in the accounting section. Is there any accountants in the audience? Any tax experts? One. Do I charge VAT on business services to Ireland? Would you be able to answer that question? Sorry, I'm not putting you on the spot there. Um, but I'm, I'm sure if you're an accountant or a tax expert, that's somewhere to jump in and give an answer. And there's lots of questions like that being asked on LinkedIn every day. And it doesn't really matter if the question is from someone who is possibly not an ideal prospect. Maybe they're, you know, they're in a different country, they're not in the, the exact location you need them to be. But it's still a good idea to answer the question. Because what happens is, everything you do on LinkedIn shows up in the activity updates of your connections. So if you're regularly answering questions in the accountant section, and that shows up on your connections update, John Smith has answered yet another question, in accounting, that's going to show that you're the go-to person for that subject. And when one of your connections is interested in hiring an accountant, you might just be at the top of their mind and they might just connect with you. The other good thing about the answers section is, the person who asks the question can choose which of the answers is the best answer. And the people who have been flagged up as the best answer for that week show up in the finance and accounting experts section, which everybody coming to that will be able to see your name and that you, you've had the best answers however many times. So the more questions you can answer and the more times you get best answer, the more visible, the more credible you become. Now I know I said it was seven tips, but I've actually got a bonus tip for you. So here's tip eight. To stay visible on LinkedIn, to keep top of mind with your connections, here's an easy way to do it that doesn't take a lot of effort. Use the status update. Again, I don't think a lot of people actually know it's there. Use the status update to share things that you're doing. For instance, if you, you know, if you were using it and coming to the event today, you could have been saying for the last week, I'm going to the expo, I'm on stand, whatever, come and say hi. Again, that flags up in, your, in the activity updates of all your connections. You can put things in there, you can talk about a new client you just won, or a project you were working on. So it just keeps in, in people's minds that, oh yeah, that's what they do. You can also give a tip in the status update, which is good if you can't think of anything else to say which I've done there. So use LinkedIn <coughs> to stay visible by using the status updates. So let's have a quick summary of what we've talked about. Tip one, create a snappy headline. 
Use words that will stand out, that will make people want to know more about you. Tip two, create a well-crafted, keyword-rich summary. And I think I actually missed that out when I was talking about that, so I will just go over that. When you're writing your summary, think about the keywords that people would type into Google to find your products or services. Everybody goes on about, oh, I need keywords on my website, I need keywords on my website, I need to be flagged up on the first page. I did a search the other day for the words social media marketing for small businesses in Newcastle upon Tyne. And then I looked at the results. My website was nowhere. But my LinkedIn profile was on the first page, right at the top. So LinkedIn can be really useful for search engine optimization. Tip three, your first level connections. Build the foundation of your network on LinkedIn with people who already know, like, and trust you. Because, tip four, you're more likely to be able to get an introduction to those second connections if they do know you. Tip five, if you come across someone who you want to connect with and you can't, there's no one to introduce you, personalize the invitation. Make them aware that you've taken the time to actually look at what they do and you're interested in them. Tip six, start building visibility and credibility by using groups. Join at least five and look at them regularly and comment where you can. Create even more visibility and credibility by looking for your uh, subject in the answers section. Try and answer two questions a week. That will definitely build your visibility. And the bonus tip, tip eight, to stay visible without a lot of effort, use the status update. I'm sure by using those tips, you can now go back to your office at the end of the day and start building a cracking network on LinkedIn. <laughs>